Hi there, this is Dr. Seymour P. Kern, um, and I'm here to discuss a beautiful topic called low noise thinking. It's something that you're going to see more and more into the future. Um, people ask, well, what does noise have to do with thinking? Well, quite a bit. Uh, but we're not just talking about audio noise, we're also talking about noise in the general sense. It could be electronic, it could be emotional noise, it could be noise, basically stuff you don't want in your head, stuff that, that you don't want, it's it's extraneous material, and uh, or the volume is too high, stuff like that. So anything that's not wanted is noise, and anything that's wanted is the opposite of noise, it's quiet. Anyway, um, so I've been working on this subject for quite a long time, and um, and what I was trying to do is try to figure out why certain things happen in life, just let's say schizophrenia, or suicide, or depression, or, you know, these are psychological situations. This is apart from, you know, all the other things, but that's the one that we're going to talk about right now. The others are available in this book if people want it. Um, you can contact me, we'll talk about that later. In any case, if you like what you hear, please uh, press the, the button, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, whichever way you want to go. Um, uh, low noise thinking will take care of it, but good. Um, so, um, so to begin with, on, from an audio point of view, um, if you were at an airport with the roar of the engines, it would be impossible for you to hear a pin drop. Yet, if the noise of the room or the ambient noise uh, goes down sufficiently enough, you can actually hear a, a pin drop. And actually, it could be so loud that it could be deafening. It uh, depends on how you know quiet the room is. So if you come from a quiet room, um, then that would be the situation. So anyway, uh, to go into the uh, description a little bit more, uh, there is in the scientific uh, information a, um, a formula called uh, signal-to-noise ratio. A ratio meaning you have a numerator and a denominator. In the numerator, or the top part of the ratio, you have the signal. And on the bottom part, you have the noise. So when you divide the signal by the noise, if that ratio is greater than one, in other words, the signal is beating out the noise, you'll be able to understand what's going on. It'll be rational. If the noise level rises above the signal level, at the moment it does that, um, everything disappears. It's uh, completely and totally blocked. So low noise... Um, is low resistance to noise. Actually, anything that lowers your noise level is good for you uh, in most situations, all right? If the noise level is too high, it's just like you're pushing yourself uphill. Uh, that would be work. And uh, so that would drive the, the signal, the noise ratio would go up in relation to the signal. Anyway, I don't want to confuse you, but... Um, when you get to a situation where the noise drops to zero, any number divided by zero is an infinite term. You know, it's like a little eight uh, lying on its side. Um, so um, you want to uh, get the noise, but not completely uh, down to zero. And so basically we have to figure out what is the optimum level of noise for you and everybody has a different level and some people have it uh, that the noise level is so small that they have perfect memory uh, they call them eidetic memory where you you know remember and see everything um people with high iqs uh, uh, and in a suicidal patient the noise drops down to so low that uh, you get information overload and the suicidal patient will go into overload and he can't control himself anymore and the only way out is uh, you know what. So um, we want to make sure that we're function functioning at the optimum level 
of the signal to noise ratio. Again, too high is too resistant, uh, too low is a short circuit, uh, basically information overload, and that's the end of it. So anyway, that's a brief discussion on low noise thinking. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call me or contact me uh, uh, via the site. Um, or you can email me directly. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And that email address is cyberside, that's C-Y-B-E-R-C-Y at M-E dot com. That's cyber, C for Charlie, Y for Young, B for Boy, E for Edward, R for Romeo. And then C-Y, C for Charlie, Y for Young at M-E dot com. Cyberside at M-E dot com. And we hope you have a beautiful noise-free day <laughs> and enjoy life and life is beautiful thank you